Hi, I'm Rudy Simone, and I am the author of a number of books on Asperger syndrome, including Asperger's Empowering Females with Asperger Syndrome, and my latest book, 22 Things a Woman with Asperger Syndrome Wants Her Partner to Know. The reason that I wrote this book is because, um, well, first of all, a lot of people asked me to write it. Uh, a lot of women on the spectrum wanted their partners and their families and loved ones to understand them better. Women have long been overlooked um, as being members of the spectrum community. Indeed, when I first started in this business, I was told by professionals that there were no women on the spectrum. And of course, now we know that that's not true. Uh, but it's much, it, it presents differently in females, but more so than that, it's perceived differently in females. And there's definite reasons why uh, we are the fascinating creatures that we are. And it's, it's much easier to understand someone and to love them if you understand the reasons behind um, the behavior, the reasons behind the trait. Traits such as, um, just to give you an example from my own relationship, um, I need ritual and routine. I don't like surprises, for example. So if my boyfriend, if, if Christmas or a birthday is coming up, I'll say to my boyfriend, what are you getting me? I need to know what you're getting me because I'm afraid that it'll be a surprise that I won't like. And of course, being on the spectrum, I won't be able to hide my disappointment and I don't want to hurt his feelings. So to the uninitiated, this could look really bizarre and like some sort of control freak, but really I just don't want him to waste his time and money shopping for something that I don't like. So these kinds of things are explained. Another characteristic about women on the spectrum, I think even more so than our, our male counterparts, is that we can be sort of social chameleons. Because we are very, very good at mimicking social behavior, we're almost like social detectives. So, for example, when I was a youngster, um, if, if I made a new friend and if she was from somewhere else, I would pick up her accent. Um, when I moved to Britain, I developed an English accent within about three days. Um, and this will happen wherever I go. I, I almost take on uh, the characteristics of the culture that I'm in because I don't intrinsically have a social language um, of my own, really. Uh, my, my social language is actually very quite Spock-like. Um, it's just exchanging information other than that being quiet. So when I'm around other people, I know that they expect me to be to, to converse and so I will converse in a way that I think appropriate for the situation but that's what I've learned by mimicking other people. You would never know that unless you read some books and researched it or, or lived with someone for a very long time. When I was writing this book I solicited interviews with not only women on the spectrum but obviously their partners as well and this applied to both um, heterosexual and gay couples as well. And it was interesting to me to see the reactions and the words from the partners. It seemed to me that, that those who um, took responsibility uh, for trying to understand their partner were much more likely to be having a successful relationship. Uh, I talked to some ex-partners and they, they seemed to blame rather than understand. They would blame behaviors on, on the Asperger girl rather than understanding the reason behind the behavior. And I think that that's really key. I could almost tell who, who hadn't made it, who was going to make it, you know, who wasn't going to make it by, by the reactions of the partners. You really have to have an open mind. Uh, you can't just say, well, I live with her. I live with her, so therefore I know all about Asperger's. Absolutely not. There's a lot more to it than that. What's your, if you're living with someone, you're seeing things through your own lens. But if you're reading the words of other people in a similar situation, you're seeing things through a much broader lens um, and you're benefiting from the wisdom of other people who've, uh, who've experienced these things. My own partner does not like to read books. He likes to listen to things on you know, BBC and CNN and he likes to listen to news things and podcasts and stuff. So I told him, you have to read my books, but he just reads so slow. So, in order to get him to read my books, I had to read them aloud to him every night. And it actually took us only about three nights. And as he was hearing the words of other partners, he would be like, oh, I hadn't thought of that, or now I get it. So I could see where he was in his process of beginning to understand me. <laughs>
Getting my diagnosis, and first, like a lot of adult women, I had to self-diagnose, has been the start of an absolutely amazing journey. I look back now on my life and all my past relationships, and I can see where they went wrong. Um, and I can prevent things going wrong in my current relationship and in the future. Um, and it's just it's just been such an eye-opener it's just been so validating and I think that's what other people don't have and I want to provide that that validation there's been a lot of suffering because of being misunderstood misdiagnosed mismedic mismedicated um, you know families have broken up people have gotten divorced uh, people that truly loved each other gave up because they weren't speaking the same language. It's not just couples, of course, that will be affected by having knowledge or not having knowledge. There's children involved, um, there's brothers, sisters, parents, grandparents, etc., etc. So it's, it's really important that the entire family um, takes this information on board. Um, and where there's one person on the spectrum in a family, of course, there's going to be more than one. So there should be a lot of aha moments for other people in the family as well. But if you yourself are on the spectrum, um, you'll find more understanding of yourself because there's definitely more things in common between men and women than there are differences. And if you're not on the spectrum, um, you can then become a sort of a, a, a translator for other people who aren't on the spectrum and, and you can explain why. And this, this can help keep families from falling apart due to misunderstandings. So even though it's a light read and it's a fun read and it's a short read, to me, it's still very important.